did you even get into that <laughs> space to be able to be like, yo, thug, yo, baby, like, yo, like, how was, you feel me? The way that I got started um, in the industry, um, there used to be a lady named Juice who had a nail shop in the West End. She decided that she wanted to start a magazine. When she started the magazine, she put me, like, over the marketing team. And mm. we were trying to think about what would be, like, a good way to do it. So we were like, F- it, we're going to have an all-girls marketing team. So we went and recruited, like, interns and sh- from the college and all that sh- And it was crazy because one night there was, like, this big party at the club. We had done, like, one issue at a magazine. We were given, you know, had the table set up, giving out the magazines. And then I see, like, these d- come. So I see the niggas, like, pulling up in, like, Rolls Royces and Porsches, Lamborghinis, all kind of whatever, whatever. So, you know, me, I'm thinking business, like, okay, these niggas clearly have money, so I can get them to buy some ads in mm. the magazine for the next issue. So one of my homeboys was with them, and I told him, I'm like, bro, I don't know who the leader is, but I need to meet the leader. And, <laughs> the leader is crazy. Yeah, to like, I need boy. to meet the leader. Like the I'm the leader <laughs> that makes the decisions so that I can sell some ads for the magazine and get these some exposure. So he was like, Bet, I got you. So they come out of the club. He tells me to come here real quick. So he I come here or whatever, whatever. He introduces me to the leader. You keep saying the leader. The leader <laughs> turned out to be Big Meech. Oh shit. Yo, what's poppin'? It's your boy, Mr. J. Hill, and welcome to another episode of the J. Hill Podcast. But right now, I want to give a special thank you and shout out to our sponsor, that's Top Dog Law. So look, man, if you suffer from medical malpractice, a slip and fall, especially a car accident, make sure you call my guy Top Dog Law. That's Top Dog Law on Instagram and topdoglaw.com. Look, if you check out his Instagram, you'll see he uploading big checks. I mean, like every day. I ain't talking about the little ones. The big ones. So shout out to my guy, Top Dog Law, topdoglaw.com. Get that money. I know I'm trying to get it. Yo, I feel like Atlanta is one of the only places, well, the only place that I see. The strip club is, is like, it's just crazy. Like, every strip club, first of all, Cheetah, right? Yeah. It's like, what, like a four or five-star restaurant? Cheetah is a, yeah, Alluvia is the only five-star restaurant in Atlanta. But Cheetah isn't really considered a strip club. It's more so considered a titty bar. Like they have like in Detroit and shit like that. Oh, okay. Cause I'm because like, they don't get they don't get all the way naked. Okay. And you can't well, I think as of like maybe about a month ago, they just started letting the customers and the patrons throw money. Cause before, like a month ago, if you threw money, they put you out. Yo, that is crazy. Like I come to Atlanta, niggas like, yo, the strip club got the best food. Then I hear about Cheetah, niggas like, nah, that food is A one. I'm like, yeah, it's the at only the five star club. restaurant in the city. <laughs> like at the strip club, that's crazy. Yeah. Oh man. Y'all but ready? then it was like when the fucking when the pandemic hit, like and all the out of town people started coming. It was like before Cheetah was like a chill spot where you could go duck off, even if you're gonna bump into somebody, it's not a big deal. But then when the pandemic happened and like all the out of town niggas came, they started having shootouts at Cheetah and like all kind of shit. Just it up now you got to go through a metal detector it's like a whole big thing like that shit was just like too much damn man let's get let's we ready we can get this started let's get it popping i thought we were filming oh man oh we were probably but let's officially get it started what's popping you know what time it is your boy mr j hill j hill podcast in the building shout out to everybody that's uh, locked in right now make sure you tune into the audio make sure you uh subscribe like make leave a review all that five stars so you you rocking with the boy man this guest right here is one of like a legend. I'm gonna cry. Like, I mean, no cap. Like, oh all this God. is is genuine. Y'all know me, yo. When I do my my when I do do the intros, is all genuine. This chick right here. I'm getting misty. Is so no nah, like nah. Real talk though. Like, no, I'm serious. I'm a cancer. She's I like, just cry anyway. So yeah, yeah. Like, see that? It's hard. She is like probably if 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 I can describe it, it would be you know how I say everybody needs foundation. You need the foundation to start something or create something. You gotta start with the foundation. She's like a brick in the foundation of Atlanta. Like, period. Like, am I am I like do I have it right? Like, I've been here for a year and maybe a couple months. And when I was I, we never really got introduced 
uh, like legitimately or whatever. But when people were set talking about you, they always was like, nah, Jade is that girl. Like, she really is Atlanta. If you're looking for somebody that's Atlanta, talk to Jade. Like, no cap. So, like, I'm like, man, I just want to get to know. I want to know, know my way around. I want you to just give me some game. Yes. You know, I'm a journalist, too, at the end of the day. So I, I kind of want to know where I'm at. Yeah, we are media personalities. Yeah, so I want to yes. know where I'm, where I'm at, what's going on. Is it anything that I need to know about Atlanta? Just being a journalist, like, and I thought you were the perfect person to come to. So, everybody, Jade is in the building. What up, gang? Hi, everybody. Gang, gang. What's up, gang? Yo, you are. I yo, I love your come up. Like, I, um, I was talking oh to God. uh, I was talking to um, please don't kill me, guys. Mandy yesterday. Yes. Mandy B. And I was telling her like like she's like I love her. you feel me like yes. she's really a staple in podcast culture now. Yes. And like you are that in like shout the, out to horrible decisions. Facts. You are that in the culture alone, right? And like I was like man I gotta talk to Jake because like first of all people I feel like women don't get there they just do. You're right. But I feel like you are one of them people that like you can't really not give it like it's. You feel me like you can't not give it to you? If that makes sense, like you is you are you got it already. Like you took it. You feel like that? Do you feel or you still feel like Um I feel like in a lot of ways being a female in this industry is extremely tough because whether or not you want to admit it, like even outside of the industry and in most major aspects of life women and females are the ones that are going to make sure everything runs smoothly mm. and they're going to make sure that you know like all the business gets handled they're going to make sure that you're fed they're going to make sure that you can make your doctor's appointments and that you get to the dentist on time and that you make your flight and that can kids get birthday presents and your wives get in valentine's day gifts and mm. you know all that kind of shit. but at the end of the day there aren't really any awards for that because women are kind of like, I feel like expected to be like natural nurturers. So mm. people feel like and assume that, okay, yeah, they went above and beyond, but like that's what they're supposed they to do. do. You know like, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So it's not really like that big of a deal when at the end of the day, like if they didn't go to that above and beyond distance, your life would fall apart. Mm. But do you feel like you get yours, your flowers? I feel like I do sometimes. For real? Sometimes? Sometimes, but it's like I get it from I know this might sound crazy, but I more so get it from I get it from like my immediate circle like all the time, but now it's it's coming now that like I'm a media personality like when I go out to the grocery store, when I go to a restaurant or like if I'm jogging in the park or something like people are coming up to me with not just, oh my God, like, you know, you're Jade and I love your podcast or I see you with all the celebrities or whatever. They're coming up to me now with stories about mm. how certain situations that I've touched on when we did a Big Facts Friday edition, when it was just us and we were just talking our shit or whatever, has helped them through a situation that they've had in life. Mm. And that's that kind of shit is what really matters to me because knowing that I'm able to help somebody get past the point in life that they didn't think that they were going to be able to get through, that means more to me than any dollar amount, any celebrity picture, or any kind of accolade or any other thing that could come my way, like, honestly. It's crazy because I ask you that because as an outsider, I feel like you do, and I'm going to tell you why. When I, so when I got introduced to the podcast, mm -hmm. I'm not from Atlanta, I'm like, okay, I know, I know DJ Scream. Right. E even... I didn't even know who Black was. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, but, like, people were telling me, like, that was in the hip-hop culture, in the community or mm -hmm. whatever. I'm like, okay. So I'm like, it's just those two, right? Yeah. And even on the intro, they need to add your name. But They did. They did? They added yeah, yeah, yeah. It? Okay, okay. Yeah. So, but when I came to Atlanta, immediately, like, I mean, they like, oh, nah. Nah, Jay belong there. Like, like people in Atlanta know, and I was curious to know, like, when you, when you got on the podcast, did you hear the mumbles of who is this chick or was it you already knew you you belonged there okay so here's here's how i let me let me <clears> just go back to how i even got on the podcast in the first place so um 
a few years ago, like me and Black used to do this party every year called the No Cat Party. Mm-hmm. And the first one that we did, um, Big Bang. Big Bang, yeah, the, I'm sorry. Yeah, for, the people, for yeah, the people that don't know. Big Bang. I'm naming um, niggas like I know niggas. <laughs> like, who am I? To, like, I'm talking, calling this nigga black like I know this man. Right. Um. So the first year that we did it, everything was cool. Everything was going great. But then the night of the party, there was like a blizzard, like a, a huge snowstorm. Atlanta's never seen a storm like that at all. Mm-hmm. So we were thinking like, man, we need we need to cancel the party, like whatever, whatever. But everybody was like, nah, nah, you know, it's cool, whatever, whatever. Man... Everybody and their f***ing mama came out in the blizzard. Niggas wrecked on the way there, didn't give a f***, left their cars, came to the party. Like, we sold out. The booths were $10,000, and everybody came. Nobody wanted anything for free. Thug bought a booth. Future bought a booth. F***ing baby bought a booth. Like, everybody came, and we partied in that bitch until, like, 4 or 5 in the morning. Damn. And we came outside. It was still snow. Like, it was crazy snow. But then... The next day, um, I can't remember which album it was. Future was dropping his album, and he didn't do any interviews, but he, he set up the with, Apple Music thing, yeah. and you know, it was a one-on-one with him and yeah. Black, him and Bank. The um, ah, uh, the uh, his label, the um, Free Band, yeah, uh, Free yeah. Band Radio, yeah, 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 yeah. That was the first ever, you know, what I'm saying, edition of Free Band Radio or whatever. And I know a little something, bro. You know, yeah. So, <laughs> so Black was like, even before that, Black was like, you know, we need to start like a show or something called the No Cap Show. So we went. I went around. I got like drops from like all these artists. Everybody like Baby, Quavo, Offset, Take Off, everybody, Long Live, Thug gave me a drop. Um, Yachty, Money Bag, everybody gave me drops like. This is an all-cap show with Big Bang, Jade, whatever, whatever, blah, blah, blah. So another year went by. We had another party. But then they had a they had this little war about who started the no-cap word and all this shit. So Black was like, man, I ain't fucking with that shit. Yeah. Let me figure something else out. So then Scream came and was like, we can do a podcast and we can call it Big Facts. And that way, every nigga that comes on the podcast is going to have to basically – tell the truth about whatever it is that we asked them. So it's not going to be like the commercial shit, like the rest of these podcasts, whatever, whatever. So Black was like, okay. So Scream was like, I'm going to put it together. All you got to do is pull up. So my role in the podcast was getting the artists, getting, getting the guests, them there, right? you know what I'm yeah. saying, whatever, whatever. But it was like when we would film, the artist, you know, like, okay, say we're sitting in a room like this and I'm like, it's it's here's the platform, but right, like I'm, I'm sitting over you. here. So it's like when they were talking to Black and Scream, they would inadvertently like talk to me off camera. So when we would edit it, they it'll look like they'd be talking to like a ghost or some shit, and right. you could hear me, but you couldn't see me. So eventually, one day, Black was like, but "You're not finna keep like laughing and talking <laughs> to people like on the side of my shit. Bitch. Just pull up a chair." Mm-hmm. So. We tried it one day, cause you know I'm not really like a in front of the camera kind of person. I like to just be behind the scenes, do my job, put the shit together, and you know leave it alone. But I pulled up my chair, and the shit has been up like ever since. But did people like again? Not not Atlanta, right? Did yeah. you did you hear or see the mumbles of like who is this chick? Yeah, of course. And for me, I I just wanted to to, to ask that because for me, like again, outside of Atlanta, yeah. I'm like okay. I thought she, I thought she was cool because I'm at first I'm like I'm a, a journalist. I was always an interviewer, so I thought she right, was cool because right. I saw like how the questions and how people gravitated with you. But I didn't understand why. When I touched down in Atlanta, I feel like the people made it known why they was like nah, nah. Jay is no cap. I'm not making this up, bro. I'm like, damn. So for me to hear that, not being from here, yeah. from the streets, right? Like essentially that's what they would say from the streets. Me hearing that from the streets, yeah. I feel like you get I feel like you get your flowers that you deserve in Atlanta. Yeah, 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 for sure. But it's like sometimes there are some people that don't know no better. Yeah, that for lack of a better way to put it, don't want to give it up and those are the people that motivate me to go even harder so mm. to the point where like eventually when I get finished you're not going to have a choice. You're doing a hell of a job. How did you get into that space like 
just because even when you said we, I got the drop from Thug, I got the drop from Baby, like you, you skipped the whole level. Like, how did you even get into that <laughs> space to be able to be like, yo, Thug, yo, Baby, like, yo, like, how was you feel me? Yeah. Um. Well, like I really like came up with most of these people because you got to understand, like, a lot of the people that are like for lack of a better way to put it, running things in the industry now are from Atlanta. Mm. So being around and, you know, seeing people and, you know, doing business with people and, you know, doing other things with people, like you build a rapport and you build a relationship with them and you become gradually family over a certain amount of time. Mm. But the way that I got started um, in the industry, um, there used to be a lady named Juice who had a nail shop in the West End. Um, I used to get my nails done, but like I spent crazy money with her. Like every other week I was spend I was in high school, like spending two, three hundred dollars on my nails and shit. So she said she decided that she wanted to start a magazine. When she started the magazine, um, like she was like a big sister to me, so she put me like over the marketing team and mm. we were trying to think about what would be like a good way to do it. So we were like, fuck it, we're going to have an all girls marketing team. So we went and recruited like interns and shit from the college and all that shit. And it was crazy because I was recruiting these interns, but like all of these people were older than me, mm. but they still respected my direction and respected my words to the point where, you know, they listened and we were able to, like, really create something great. And then um, one night, there was, like, this big party at the club. Um, we had, like, a table set up. We were giving out. We had done, like, one issue of the magazine. We were giving, you know, had the table set up, giving out the magazines. And then I see, like, these niggas come. So I see the niggas, like, pulling up in, like, Rolls Royces and, Porsches, Lamborghinis, all kind of shit, whatever, whatever. So, you know me, I'm thinking business like, okay, I can get these niggas clearly have money so I can get them to buy some ads in mm. the magazine for the next issue. So um, one of my homeboys was with them and I told him, I'm like, bro, I don't know who the leader nigga is, but I need to meet the leader nigga. And <laughs> the leader nigga is crazy. Yeah, like I need boy. to meet the leader nigga. Like the nigga, nigga that, I'm the leader. <laughs> that makes the decisions so that I can sell some ads for the magazine and get these niggas some exposure. So he was like, bet, I got you. So they come out of the club. He um he tells me to come here real quick. So he I come here or whatever, whatever. He introduces me to the leader nigga. You keep saying the leader, nigga. The leader, <laughs> nigga, crazy. turned out to be Big Meech. Oh shit! Wait, so like, <laughs> yo, what the fuck? Yeah, so like, um, oh, you want some? You want some? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yo, wait, you just, yo, <laughs> I was not expecting that shit. Yeah, you want some? Another drink. No, I'm I God don't, no, I damn, don't like <laughs> out of all names, I'm thinking like you said big Meech. Okay, my yeah, bad. Yeah, so like so he introduced me to Meech. Um he introduced me like to everybody else, the rest of the guys, J Bo, Baby Blue, um, everybody, twin, like all of them. Um, and I gave him my sales pitch right on the spot. Like, we have a magazine, um, I see you guys have an entertainment company, you know, you guys need exposure. We have a magazine. I'm here to help. I can blow you up. Like, what are we doing? He was like, how much are the ads? What, or whatever. So I was like, well, I had to think quick on my feet. So mm. I'm like, you know, the ads are like 1500 But, you know, if you give me 2500 I can put y'all on the cover. Mm. Blah, blah, blah. We can have a photo shoot. Blow it up. Whatever, whatever. Make it make sense so he can want to do it. Yeah, this nigga gave me 5000 And was Shit. like, um, call me tomorrow. So, you know, I'm looking like, okay... But it was only, he was like, no, 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 just keep it. He was like, just call me tomorrow. We'll put the shit together. He was like, I'm drunk. I'm finna, I'm finna go to the house. Oh, I'm like, okay. So I called the next day. Um, we get the photo shoot set up. He was like, you need anything else? I was like, hell no. Nah. You gave me like 2,500 extra dollars. Like I'm finna stretch this shit and, you know, make it do what it does. He was like, nah, nah, that, that other money was for you. Like, just let me know what it is. I'm going to send the money. Just tell me, like, where we need to pull up, when and where, blah, 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 whatever, whatever. So we did the photo shoot together. Um, we actually had – his artist at the time was Blue Da Vinci, 
And um, so we put blue on one side and we put tip on the other side, um, T.I. Yeah. on the other side or whatever. So this was like around birthday bash time. So we actually dropped the magazine like during birthday bash. So they wanted to do like a whole run or whatever and a whole like a big coming out because it was at Lakewood at the time. And um, Long Live DJ Nando, we had like a, we went and bought a booth. We went and bought like two booths outside. Nando was DJing. We had a block party like inside a birthday bash. Like we were giving out all kind of shit like shirts, fucking magazines, money, all kind of shit, whatever, whatever. But the big thing was they were able to get Blue on the stage. So when they put Blue on the stage, he had, Meech had this idea like, okay, we got to do something that people are going to remember. So he was like, we need to make it rain over the stadium shit or whatever, whatever. So I'm thinking like, how the fuck we finna make it rain like over the stadium? He was like, you gonna go up in a helicopter and drop the money. So I'm like, huh? He was like, we gonna, we, we gonna figure this shit out. Just give me, give me a couple of days. We gonna figure this shit out. So he ended up giving me like $20,000 in ones. And the helico- he arranged the helicopter and did everything, whatever, whatever. So I went to the, I went to the, the clear port. I got in the helicopter with the helicopter driver and we flew to Lakewood Stadium. So when we started dropping the money at first, it was kind of like we were having a problem because when I was dropping the money, when he was like leaning over to drop the money, the money was flying up into the propellers and oh, like chopping shit. up. Okay. So that was like the first thousand that I threw out. So the helicopter man was like, what we're going to do is I'm going to lean this way and you're going to throw the money this way. So it won't go into the helicopter and it'll actually like drop down during the performance or whatever. So we did that. We flew around like probably like 15 or 20 times. I threw all the money, whatever, whatever. So the helicopter man was like asking me like, so you're not going to like, hold any of it and I'm like no like he gave me all of this to throw like why would I I'm not finna cuff the money like that that's not why I'm here like that's not the purpose so he was looking at me like I was crazy we flew back down I drove back to um Lakewood and like when I drove back to Lakewood like I'm sorry everybody was talking about oh my god like it was money in the sky this and that blah 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 and like I never said anything about like me being the person that was like throwing it but That was, like, the talk of fucking Birthday Bash that year. Like, the money that flew out the sky when he was performing. And that was, like, the most craziest shit that I've ever seen in life. Like, for real, for real. Yo, this episode is sponsored by The Morning Meetup. Man, shout out to my guy, David Shines, man. He's probably one of the few people I know who actually built multiple multi-million dollar businesses, right? He created The Morning Meetup to help other entrepreneurs do the same thing. Now, listen. As an entrepreneur myself, I know how hard it can get, especially when we start making money. And we get to like this financial cap that we can't get past. And honestly, let's be real. They say it ain't what you know, it's who you know. We probably can't get past this cap because we either, one, outgrew the people around us, or two, we just being lazy and weighing in the rooms we need to be in. It's just plain and simple. But trust me, this is your time because the morning meetup is that room we got to be in. It's filled with with entrepreneurs getting to it. They reading different books every month, right? They holding each other accountable. And it's just honestly just something dope to be a part of. So listen, if you're an entrepreneur and you're trying to get to this bag, you're trying to flourish more than you've been flourishing now, you got to go to the morningmeetup.com. That's www.themorningmeetup.com and join now. Let's get to it. I'll see you there. And from there, everybody like, I want to get next to Jade. I want to get next to Jade. Yeah, but I mean, it was like, I didn't, you know, I'm not really like a, I'm not really a, a big on the scene kind of person. I just, you know, I just like to do my job and just kind of be there. And if you need me, I'm here and I can pop out, do what I need to do and then pop back in. You see what I'm saying? Like That shit crazy. They ain't putting you in a, um, in a show. They ain't gonna, they need to put that scene in the show. They ain't even got to Atlanta yet. I'm about to say, they need to put that scene <laughs> in the show. That shit crazy. Like, yo. Yeah. That's legendary. God. But yeah, damn. like Meech, Meech was a, Meech was an incredible, extremely intelligent, amazing amazing person like for real for real so you was able to see you're not that old but we hear this term yeah. new Atlanta you was kind of able to see the transition into that yeah but that was like the Olympics what was 96 what was that 90 
No, they when we did that, that was like that no. Was like I'm saying when was the when was the because uh, they called New Atlanta after the Olympics, right? That's oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That was like what ninety ninety six ninety six. Yeah, you was able to see the transition of the. New I was Atlanta. like in the sixth seventh grade. So you was able to see the New Atlanta. Damn, that's that's damn. Yeah, like yo, like damn. I'm speechless, kind of like. Yeah, like it was. That was. Those were some of the best years of my life, honestly. I swear, like there's there's nothing that'll ever be able to compare to that, ever. It's like I'm honestly, it's like talking to the, the the down south Nori. Like I watch like Drink Champs, and I'm like, this yeah, nigga, yeah, yeah. Is she got so many stories? Cause like he was with these niggas, and yeah. like talking to you, like it's like damn, like <laughs> you say, yeah, they pull up in Lamborghinis and shit. It was Big Meech, and the leader of the group was Big Meech. I'm like, the fuck, wait, hold the fuck up, like. <laughs> Oh, so you know Big Meeks personally. On the yeah. name on the name the name basis, like, yeah, nigga. Yeah. Damn. So you was able to see like at one point in time in hip hop culture, because I'm relatively new in this, like seven years. Mm-hmm. Right. And even now I still don't I don't really listen to everything. I don't really care. I'm to yeah, myself. Yeah. Just being honest. <laughs> I got into this shit late. It is what it is. Yeah. You was able to see the transition from top five being damn near every artist in New York. To like damn near being every artist in Atlanta. Talk to me about that for a second. Like, when did that change? And are you able to even recall these moments being in it? I guess. So I'm gonna give you a New York story. So we had to go to New York um, one summer for Jeezy to shoot the Soul Survivor video, and you know he had like Cam in the video. He had everybody in the video, but. That same night, um, Jewels and Wayne were shooting, I can't remember the name of the song, but they had a song where they were like sitting in the classroom. It was like a black and white video, whatever, whatever. So we it wasn't shot Cam's on my face, was it? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But anyway, we were we were at the Soul Survivor shoot <clears throat> and like a baby blue Maybach pulls up. So the Maybach pulls up. It just kind of sits there for a minute, whatever, whatever. So everybody's kind of looking like, who the fuck is this? Because, you know, every, everything is on high alert at all times. So, you know, so Misha was just like, you know, nah, chill. He's good, whatever, whatever, blah, blah, blah. The door opens, and it's Jay-Z. Mm. That's he gets crazy. out, you know what I'm saying? It's him and Tierra Marie. So they get out, you know, <laughs> they come through, you know, they, you know, chop it up, whatever, whatever. And then they pull off. But it's like, I think around the Jeezy time is when Atlanta started to everything started like shifting. The Jeezy and Tip time is kind of what I feel like brought the music scene back home. Damn. Honestly, God damn. So and then you had and then you had like you know Gucci was coming out. You know it was like it was really kind of like bringing it back to Atlanta, but at the same time, also outside of the Atlanta artists, you had, like, Trick Daddy was going crazy. Like, mm. it was just the South, period. Yo, that's crazy. I think so. I mean, honestly, it sound like, not to sound too crazy, not to step out that too far, it sound like Meech was kind of, like, in the middle of helping that, that this culture For really sure. become what it is. And Definitely. Damn. Because he... Even though he wasn't from the South, that's where, like, the home base was. And that's kind of, like, what made, even though he wasn't an Atlanta nigga, that's kind of, like, what brought a lot of light to Atlanta, the moves that they were making in the city. Let me ask you this then. Mm-hmm. I was looking at, um, this is, like, outside of culture shit, but I'm just curious. Yes. I was looking at um, Omi and the Hellcat. Right, I think he just got like sentenced to uh, a few years. I think like what? That's a scammer, nigga. Yeah, like okay. five years, something like that. Um, for like uh, cable fraud or some shit like that, right? And my Piracy thought process, or some shit. yeah, but yeah. my thought process is like, here we got this man doing the wrong thing, before the betterment of so many people, right? right? And I'm thinking about as you talking about Big Meech, it was like for him to bring so much positivity. In in the culture, right? Yeah, he definitely changed lives. Right, but for it to be around the wrong thing, I'm trying to word it right. It's it's kind of like crazy, almost if you think about it, because it's like, bro, like, it's so many people out here who got good money doing the right thing, but ain't doing the right thing with it. If that makes sense. You feel me? Like mm-hmm. politicians, motherfucking uh, any any 
everybody. You know what I'm yeah. saying? It's like people got money, ain't doing nothing with it. You got this dude making money however he spreading making money. Spreading the wealth. And it's spreading the wealth. And then we take him away from the culture to lock him up, put him behind bars to take it away from us, if that makes sense. And all the shit dried up. That shit. Left. It's like, it's kind of like, not to, I'm not trying to be on my soapbox, but it's almost, it's just kind of like, as a culture, as a black people, like, the moment we have some light or the yeah. moment we have hope, they take it away from us. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. That's it's just, I don't know, it's just weird. Like, it's just weird. Damn. So you having all these connects, I guess it it kind of makes the conversation easy for you on a, on a show. Yeah, because it's, they're, because there are, there are certain things that I can touch on and certain things that I can speak about with certain guests that might not be able to come from, you know, like, you know, it might not be, it, it'll be received differently coming from somebody they know else. You. Just like, just like when we did the Birdman interview, like, I've been on Bird 20 years, like, I've stayed at his house, you know, like, I've done plenty of business with him, whatever, whatever. So when it came time to ask about the Wayne thing and the kiss, um, I that was kind of like on me to do that because mm. there's a level of respect there. But my main thing was I wanted to – I'm a journalist, so I know that I had to ask the question, but I wanted to ask it in the proper way so that he could understand that, like, I'm asking this because this is what the people want to know, not how everybody else has done it, like trying to troll you on some like weirdo shit. You see what facts. I'm saying? No, nah, facts. So, all right, so I'm I'm gonna be going. Take it, take bear with me because I gotta. I'm gonna be going everywhere with this. In those moments, though, right, being a journalist, mm-hmm. understanding that we gotta ask those hard questions. Yes. But sitting across from somebody that probably don't want to be asked these questions. Yeah. How hard that gotta be? I feel like people do not understand. They don't. It's extremely. Awkward and extremely <laughs> uncomfortable. Oh my god! Because it's like you know that you have to get it out, but even all the way up to the second of the delivery, it's like, fuck, am I gonna fuck this up? Like, mm, is mm, this gonna mm. go left or like, what the fuck? Like, but when you have a when you have a certain, I don't want to say a certain standard about yourself, but when you have like a certain image about yourself and people know that like you're not on no corny shit or like not on no weirdo shit even though you you're still thinking like i hope they don't take this the wrong way they already know the like fist, you're yeah. not coming oh. from a malicious place Facts. or you're not coming from like a weirdo place you're coming because this is something that you have to do because this is a part of what this whole situation is to get the information out you know what helped me sometimes? Sometimes. Barely. Like well, you I, close your eyes and think about him being naked? No, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> no, nigga. I told you about that shit. You be horny, bro. You posting all that shit on Instagram. Like, have you seen? <laughs> no, I don't think about nobody being naked, nigga. Um, no, nah, so what I do is I say, I tell niggas like, yo, I got to talk about this. You feel me? Like, yeah. it ain't, you know what I'm saying? It just is what it is. Yeah. Me, personally... I think I was talking about this with, uh, fuck, thug, nephew, B Slime. Yeah. And I was telling him, I, honestly, how hard it is, I think that's some of the, the realest shit to do. Because I feel like it's easy. Niggas could say everything they want behind somebody back. Huh? How hard, you say how hard what is? To like ask somebody a hard, or like an uncomfortable question. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's some of the most real things to do. Because mm-hmm. everybody on the internet got an opinion about something. Right. But when somebody in your face, you going to keep that same energy? So it's like, I think, me personally, I think those are man conversations that build character, in my sure. in my opinion. I feel like this interviewing shit is, is kind of the, some of the hardest things to do. Because like when somebody in your face, and you're going to ask all these questions about everybody else, but when, you, when they're there, you're going to ask them? Like, yo, Birdman, so knowing that nigga really can touch you right now. Yeah. That's yeah. some. I think, me personally, I think that's probably one of some of the um, real shit you can do. Yeah, I agree. And it also, it kind of like, it builds a different type of relationship with the actual person because you, it kind of opens a different door Facts. with you guys. So, and, and it's it's like, I I live for the tough questions because it's once you, once you get it out, 
it's easier yeah. to carry on with the rest of the shit. No, nah, facts. They got a hard part out of the way. Yeah. Now we can we can enjoy the conversation. Now we can get into it. Yo, like, you know what I hate though? What do you hate? Niggas, it's like people don't want to talk about the shit that's relevant. It's like, bro, this is why you hot, to be honest. Why don't you want to talk about this? Like, it don't even make sense. Like, you come, what else we can't, what else you can't talk about? You can't talk about your music and what's going, we don't care about, people don't care. So it's like, <laughs> like, people, like, we don't want to talk about, bro, just don't talk, just don't have to interview them. Like, yeah, I hate see, that, that's, bro. that's, a, that's another thing that I like, that I don't really, like, care for is, like, when we have people and they say that they don't want to touch, they don't want to talk about this, they don't want to speak about that, whatever, whatever. But all the shit that they don't want to talk about is all of the shit that is it's current relevant. is the reason that like they're we want to interview interviewed in the first place. Like, <laughs> like yeah. yeah, like they like they don't want to talk about this relationship or this person's fucking what they got going on with this person and all the shit. But I'm like, bro, that's that's all that's been over all the blogs for the last six months. You don't want to say anything about it. No, that's facts. Speaking of journalism, I definitely want to give. Uh, Screen his flowers. Yes. For him to be like, yo, we want Black and Jade. I want Black and Jade to pull up. Let's do a podcast. Yeah. And I think even before that, well, I don't know if it was before that, but he had even seen Poor Minds before a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Before they was on 85 South Show, he had them on his yep, shit. Yep, yep. He got that ah. He might have to be the A and R. Yeah, Scream, because it was like, it was some shit. Like, because, you know, like, me and Black don't know how to do, like, none of that technical shit. Like, all the behind the boards and all that shit. All we know how to do, like, we barely know how to, like, screw these mics and shit together. So Scream had to do all that. So Scream is, like, the brains because he's the one that knows how to do the equipment and, like, everything like that. So when he was, like, all Black had to do was pull up, Black was like, fuck it, let's do it. Because mm. Black thought he was bullshitting at first. And then he was like, pull up. And then we had, I think our first guests were Moneybag Yo and Black Youngster. He was like, pull up. So Black pulled up, and he was like, so what I got to do? And Scream was like, talk, nigga. Like, that's it. So how and did then it went from there. How did y'all get the revolt deal? You just made a call? Was it like that for real? So we have a mutual friend, um, Corey Jacobs, who's Diddy's senior advisor. Um, and a really important thing about him is he just got out. I want to... I want to say, I think, from doing, like, 17 years or Damn. something. And he stayed solid, kept his mouth shut, did his time, came home to a bag, like, and a position, like, a real position. So anywhere Diddy goes, he goes. He handles a lot of um, a lot of stuff with the company. And he also has his own company that he's, that he's doing now. And they put, like, chess boards inside of the prisons. He's doing some stuff with, like, the HBCUs. He got a lot of stuff going on. So um, Black hit him one day and was like, man, he was like, we need to put this shit together. Mm. So Corey was like, give me a second. I got you. And we gave him a second, and he got us. We signed our paperwork, did our photo shoot, and here we are. What was the numbers at the time? Do you know? What numbers? Like, the YouTube numbers. Um, I want to say we were at like a couple hundred thousand. Mm. See, I'm I'm looking like, all right, where do I need to be at before I start? Because <laughs> I'm like, this is game. Yeah. Damn. So y'all was just able to reach out and make it happen. Some niggas be working for years and years. And yeah, we were blessed. We were overly blessed when it came to that. Like, it. That's why it always pays. Like, whenever somebody tells you, it doesn't really matter who you know. That's bullshit. Because who you know is everything mm. and can skip you past a whole bunch of steps. Mm -hmm. Like, for real, for real. So basically, get back out here and network. Mm -hmm. That shit don't work, bro. Yes, it does. You're not about to sit up here and cap. No, but it does sometimes. It can possibly work. It can possibly work. Yeah, we're not going to discourage no, the networkers. Fact. 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 We're not going to discourage the networkers. But like, can we be real for a second, though? Yeah. We can be real for a minute. I like that. So, how much boy? It's I feel like it's so much bullshit in networking. <laughs> Talk to me. Be real. Be real with me. Give me game. I'm here. I came to get game from. You feel me? Like you be real. That shit. I feel like. I th this is my opinion. I think. Um, I'm listening, Jay. Issa Rae said it the best 
What'd she say? She said network across, right? Mm-hmm. A lot of times we go in the room and we want to network up. Right. And when we try to network up, people not they don't give a fuck about you. It's just, they everybody trying to network <laughs> up. So like you are just one of the million trying to get my attention. Nigga, everybody in here trying to get my attention. Yeah. The problem with me is <laughs> I feel like <laughs> The people I be trying to network with is really across. They just don't know it yet. Well, because they don't know me. Like, you feel me? Like, yeah. they ain't see it yet. They probably seen it, but they don't know it's me. But but we networked. Boy, I wish you would tell these these people these lies. Like, <laughs> so we didn't network? You one of the people I'm talking about. <laughs> Jay, oh listen. Do y'all hear this nigga, bro? Oh, my God. Am I lying? I never told no. Listen. We met, right? Yes. You ain't know me. I did not. Facts. But didn't I hug you and fucking... Now, you show love, for sure. No, no. I'm, I would never take that away from you. You show love. <laughs> nah, nah, nah. Every time. Like, I keep it... Every time. I ain't never gonna... No, I'm not gonna... I'm not gonna take that away from you. You show love. You wasn't doing no stiff arms. So you wasn't. You wasn't. You gave me a number. You ain't never answered the motherfucker, but you gave me a number. You gave me a number. <laughs> but I feel like a year later, it just happened to be like somebody, one of your artists was trying to do an interview... Yeah, and that happened. But again, you didn't know that I was. You feel me? I, like, I, I I promise you, I didn't know. Like I know you didn't. When until you fucking text me, and then I see the shit from last year, <laughs> and I'm <crazy>. like, <laughs> how, many, how many text messages was, was like, it? Oh my god! How many messages was it? It was a few. It was a few. <laughs> I love this. I'm being real. It was a few. <laughs> no, it's cool. I love it because I be telling people all the time. Like, people think, I be like, bro, I don't have no pride. I text, I will hit. And tell a nigga tell me no, I'm going. Like, it it's, was a few. It's, don't stop. Even even after that, like, it was still a stretch to get here. <laughs> but we're here. Facts. And 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 we're going to fucking, we're going to go further and do a lot more shit. Facts. But, um. Talk to me about the. The in between the 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 net, so people say networking is important, but I just feel like again I feel like it's bullshit in there. But what would you? How would you describe it? So I would describe networking as basically getting your face out there. Because my thing is is like if you never would have networked with me in the first place, I never would have seen your messages from last year. Okay, and so I would start over. Yeah, so it's like a. <laughs> That that was kind of like a foundation. a name to face a foundation and a name to face recognition. Okay, yeah. okay. So you got to set that foundation first. Yeah. You might not get it right then and there. Right then, but it's gonna happen when it's time. I ain't mad at that. I don't like it, but I ain't mad at that. I ain't mad at that. For real? I, nah, that's some real shit. That's that's some great advice. And so, then you gotta you gotta lot nah, but like, I've had people do this to me before, like put me on the spot, like. I gave him my number or whatever, like, a long time ago. And then I see him again, but I don't remember them. And they'll be like, well, I met you last year. And da, da, da. I was like, okay, well, you know, just shoot me a text or something, whatever, whatever, so I can remember who you are. And then they'll be like, okay, hold on. And then they'll, like, shoot me the text. And then I see the last year's message. And I just have to, like, apologize because, like, I be having a lot of shit going on. And I, if I'm not immediately like remembering or aware of what exactly it is that you're trying to offer me, then I'm, I'm not going to say I'm not paying attention, Mm. but it's not going to register as immediately as somebody that is offering me something that I know that I'm going to need. Just being real. All right. I want to reset for a second. Um, Let's go. All right. You know, it's woman history month, Mm -hmm. right? So I've been getting, uh, I've been doing all women this month. I've been dropping all women. Oh, you women. are. Yeah, yeah. So you are. It's been a stretch. It's hard, but whatever. You are a woman in this space. You've been dominating this space. Like I said, I feel like you get your roses in um, Atlanta, mm-hmm. but you feel a little different. Yeah. How often do you feel like you get overlooked in the space that you're in? Mm, it used to happen more so like. I don't want to say back in the day because that's like that's making it seem like I'm super old. But like when I was first coming up, it used to happen a lot more. But another thing, too, like with me is like in a lot of instances, even from back then until now, 
a lot of times, like, I'm the only girl, mm. like, with all the niggas. So I stand out, and that's kind of, like, another thing that grabs people's attention because even people that don't know me, like, when they see all these niggas and then they see me, they're like, the fuck is this bitch? Like, you know what I'm saying? Trying to, like, figure out who I am and what I'm doing and, you know what I'm saying, if I'm fucking one of these niggas or, like, if I'm, like, really working or, you know what I'm saying, whatever. So it's just kind of, like, it's kind of interesting, like, but like I said, it used to happen a lot more like back in the day versus like currently. But do it still happen now? Mm, kind of, but it's kind of like I feel like people have a better understanding of who I am and what I do. So it doesn't happen as much. I was So when it do happen, I was just wondering, because you're on one of the biggest podcasts out there, right? Thank like you. mine, I'm, I'm I'm climbing and shit like that. It's good. Your shit big. is overly big too. Like, no, no, for sure. I, I ain't going. Your shit is popping. No, like, I ain't going. I ain't going under. I ain't going downplay my shit. But I'm saying like Big Facts is like one of the ones that I look to like I inspire to be next to. You. To being real, it is what it is. I can't numbers don't lie. Yes. Being one of the premier podcasts, mm-hmm. is it frustrating sometimes when people overlook you and it's like nigga like we next to y'all like we when you when y'all pull them screenshots of top ten we right there. Sometimes it is, I ain't even going to lie, because it kind of, like, it makes it, I don't want to say it makes your effort seem, your hard work and your effort kind of seem like whatever. But another thing that, that I had to learn, too, even with dealing with just life in general, is that comparison is the thief of joy. Mm. So when you compare yourself or when you get frustrated when people don't recognize your worth right off, it kind of distracts you and takes away from what you need to be doing to make sure that the next time they understand, for lack of a better way to put it. All right. Don't give me that Eric Thomas bullshit. That was good. Give me the real, though. In those moments, right, when niggas, like, trying to play or whatever, only you know the moments. Like, what's going through your mind? Like, how does that, like... How are you really feeling? I know how we supposed to feel. I know comparison to Thief of the Joy, but we human. I be wanting to go off. Mm. I be wanting to go off. But I have to, like, when another thing that I had to learn, too, is is that in this industry, when it comes to, like, females in this industry, a lot of women are all already automatically prejudged as being overly emotional mm. from the beginning. So if I snap at every nigga or every bitch that has something to say or that didn't give me my credit, then I'm going to be labeled a problem because I don't know how to control my emotions. Mm. And when it comes to the men that are in these higher positions that have the power to either promote you or demote you or, you know, make sure you get to where you need to be or hold you back, um... I'm never going to not speak my mind on something that I feel, but I have to take into account the way that I'm speaking my mind so that it doesn't come across the wrong way. Mm. But at the same time, I'm never going to let anybody disrespect me. And if I have to, if it's like a do or die situation and I have to take it there, I'm going to take it there about my respect. Mm. But I have to keep it, to a minimum on a daily basis because at the end of the day, you know, I don't want to come across as the problem. Mm, That makes sense. So it's a few few and far between the people that overlook you, right? Yeah. Let's talk about the rest of the people now. Mm -hmm. How does it feel being a black woman in the space that you're in? It feels great. Mm, What does that mean to, like, other black women, if you had to say... So if I had to say something to other black women, um, basically it, it took a lot for me to get to where I am. And I've been through, I've been through too much shit, like dealing with people and, you know, shit that I've had to go through to be able to be as successful as I am. But at the end of the day, the most important thing is never let anybody discourage you and never give up mm. because they're going to be tons and trillions and thousands of people that are going to try to tear you down that are going to fucking backstab you that are going to really try to cut your throat but you have to understand that your purpose is way bigger than anybody that's trying to stop you mm. and you can't you can't let that jar you you know right. what i'm saying you have to stay strong and keep going basically now, I ask you, what does it mean to be in this position? You said it means a lot. Mm-hmm. 
if you could go deeper, I know it's a lot, but like, go deeper. Pause. When you say deeper, what you mean? <laughs> Bro, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Yo, why you like this? Expand. No, I'm saying like, so. Enlighten me. When I'm, so a lot is vague, right? So mm-hmm. you say it means a lot. What does that mean? What What is a, like, if you could give me words to describe what a lot means to you, when I say, yo, Jay, you're amongst one of the biggest podcasts in the world, mm-hmm. right? Have some of the biggest guests in the world. You're the center of this podcast. People love who you are. You've came such a long way. You have so many relationships, great relationships with the greats, best artists. I mean, so many women look up to you. So many people come up to you trying to get your name or your number. Sometimes I autograph pictures with you. Mm-hmm. And I say, what does that mean being in that space as a woman? Okay, so to me being in that space as a woman, I can correlate the it means a lot to I'm sure how it felt when my, I don't want to say necessarily my ancestors, but my older African Americans were able to go into Macy's and shop or Mm. go and sit down at a restaurant and not have to go to the colored section or go to the dealership and buy a car. You know what I'm saying? Like that, that kind of breakthrough is what I meant by it really means a lot because there are a lot of people in this industry and a lot of women, black females in this industry that, did way more than I've done and didn't get a chance to nearly do as many things as I've gotten a chance to do. Mm. And that's like a really big deal for me. And you was able to do it being you. Exactly. That's probably the biggest. Exactly. Like we look at the stories like, uh, I always, com- it's probably a bad comparison, but I look at the success stories between Monique and mm-hmm. Oprah, right? So like Monique, she was she was in um, Precious. Mm-hmm. I think she won an award for that with the Grammy. I don't know. I don't want to misquote it, but a Grammy. I don't know. I because I, I don't know if she won it. Can somebody <laughs> fact check that for me? They Did do she... Oscars for movies. Oh, and Oscar. Shit. Okay. Well, yeah. I, I don't know if she won an Oscar. I don't I know. Doubt I it. think she wasn't she nominated or yeah, something. Yeah, I just know she got okay. a lot of attention for it, right? And I got a chance to meet her on the set of BMF last year, and she's she's incredible. I believe it. Incredible. But she got a lot of backlash for basically speaking her mind. Right. Right. And you look at people like Oprah. And hearing Oprah's story, Oprah had to endure a lot of pain. And she didn't really speak up on a lot of things that she she wanted to yes. because she felt like it would be it would be a downfall of her career. Mm-hmm. And you look at where she got to it. And I look at it and I'm like, damn, it's a shame that women or people in general, right, mm-hmm. have to kind of like hold their emotions in and not speak out on the wrongdoings because other people can really block you from a higher position you you get what i'm saying like they can really like blackball you kind of and i was just like when i hear your stories like the fact that you can make it like you said right back in the day to the to the macy's or to the water fountain that's fucking lunch counters or the dealerships or fucking the front of the bus even the front of the bus that type of shit like is really like major for me and that's the type of shit that i absolutely do not take for granted at all and the, the most important part to me is the fact that you can, for the for the analogy, to keep it on analogy, you can make it to the front of the bus being yourself. Yeah. You don't have to act like I just think, I thank God, and I know, I know this might sound weird, but I thank God every day that, like, I didn't have to fuck to get to where I'm at, mm. that I didn't have to, like, change my image. I can wear my sneakers and shit and, you know what I'm saying, still go in a meeting and, you know, still get the same check. You know, I can do it's, it's certain things that I didn't have to change about myself that will still allow me to elevate. Mm. And I, I I thank God for that every day because me changing who I am or having to fit into a box would have been the death of me, mm. honestly. Yo, I want to ask you this because this is the first time I met you. Mm-hmm. I think it was Metro Woman birthday party. Mm-hmm. You was with the... The tallest shit, all white, got the gold locks. I think like stood out. Nah, his hair was pink then. It was pink, yeah. Yeah, because he had just dropped the album. So like, like everybody see Thug, and I'm like, damn, you was with him. Y'all had y'all really close. All the shit going on right now, man. Like, how does that make you feel? 
that shit like hurts my feelings. Mm. It really like hurts my feelings because it's like, hmm, because it's like at the end of the day, he's such an amazing person, and is he's not just like an amazing person like on camera. He's an amazing person to anybody that encounters him mm. and anybody that's around, anybody that has been in his presence, anybody that could even possibly think about coming into his presence. He overcompensates for whatever's going on mm. and like overly makes sure, make sure that they're straight. Like even like his immediate family, like, he overly takes care of them. He loves them, his kids, everybody. But if you're in his space and you're close enough to be around him, then you're a part of that family. Mm. It's not like an extended family or, you know, a homie or, you know what I'm saying, no shit like that. Like, your family, there's no question about it. And to see, to see what they're doing to him right now, like, that shit hurts, man. Like, that shit really, that shit really hurts because it's like, regardless of, you know, whatever they're, he's being accused of or, you know, whatever, whatever, or whatever people's opinions are or whatever at the end of the day, he is, he's, he's probably, I want to say one of the, one of the, one of the realest and one of the, the most honest and one of the most caring is lame and it's an understatement, mm. but whatever is like the genuine. biggest, probably genuine, genuine. Oh, definitely. But whatever, like a synonym for caring is that is like 10 times, whatever caring means and 10 times, whatever, like fucking the best person in the world is like, he's definitely that. Mm. And to see him like, to see him fucking in handcuffs and shackles and shit, like going, having to go back and forth to court and you know what I'm saying? All that, that shit, like that shit is like, that shit is super lame. That shit is super lame because he took care of everybody. And again, like I said, like I, that shit is just fucked up. That it, shit is just fucked up. Outside of like, if we could separate this thing from his situation, mm -hmm. it seems like, like, I'm just one for like to try to like look at things on a bigger picture. It's so messed up. Like even what like we think about, and again, I'm not like the most political thing. So like if I say right. anything wrong, just judge it to my brain and not my heart. But like you think about back in the day, we we watched Snowfall, right? And how the government mm -hmm. dropped crack inside of our our neighborhoods, right? And then they they look at us like they they put laws in 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 order to lock us up and 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 basically put us in shackles. For something that they they dropped off on us, like what do you expect, right? You put a liquor store on every fucking corner of the hood, and you wonder why so many people are drunk. alcoholics. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like. And the same with like just outside of that, we think of people that's that grew up in these bad neighborhoods. It's like we ain't have. It's almost like we ain't have no choice, right? Yeah. We had to escape poverty, however we could escape poverty, just for us to be judged or look down upon right from the decisions that we made to basically get out of a situation that we that we ain't put ourselves in and like part of me like because i'm gonna be real like part of me is like man i understand how the things and again this is, oh, this is the, a statement on its own mm -hmm. how the things we can do affect other people but i also because i came from the hood yeah. right yeah. I also understand like how we're just trying to make it out of our situation, out of our environment. Right. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, I don't know. I always look at like, even when we talk about the big meese thing, it's like, man, it's just crazy, bro. It's just crazy. Cause like a lot of, a lot of times you see kids and they don't have no other, they think they don't have no other choice. Or no other alternative. No other alternative. And it's like, man, that shit is fucked up, bro. That shit but is. I just feel like, I feel like a lot of people like taking thug out of it. But, like, when it comes to, like, Meech and the other scammer nigga that you were talking about, the, the Hellcat dude or whatever, mm -hmm. I feel like 
okay, I get everybody has to be punished for their wrongdoings or, you know, whatever. But I feel like if the government was smart, they would understand that these people have a bigger purpose. They'd give them a job. Yes, and they, they would understand, okay, if they were able to turn this into that, then we could use them to turn that into all of this. You mm. know what I'm saying? Like, and I don't know, that should just be. Bro, I ain't scared. I'm going to make an unnecessary but bold statement. I feel like niggas like Omi and a Hellcat, I feel like niggas like that are super superheroes. Because yeah. at the end of the day, man, this man probably never seen as much money in his in, the, in his work, in, in his life, right? Right. And his family probably, the, the way it was going, probably would never see that. And because he took a stance, his family probably will never starve again. And honestly, like, as a man, I ain't gonna lie, like, I, I don't wish jail on nobody, but sometimes I'd be like, man, would I be willing to do that for my family? Because I feel like that's, to me, that's a, it's gonna sound crazy, but that's an even trade, bro. Yeah. If I, as a, I feel like that's what our job, our duty is as men, to make sure our only, family good. he only got, what, like five years? But even... Worst case, even if it even if it was more, it's like, bro, if I could, if I had to, if I had to trade my life for my family life and my family family life, I feel like that's what a man should do. Yeah, I agree. Like to be honest, like that's a bold statement, but I just feel like that's what makes you a man. Like that's what makes you a character. Like sacrifice. what are you willing to do? Yeah, what are you willing to sacrifice for the greater good for everybody? It ain't about just me. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. And I look at niggas like that, like man, bro, they deserve an award. Yeah, yeah. Like I know it's it might be messed up to so many other people, but bro. Them other people wasn't giving my family no no money to help us out. Right. You feel me? So it's like, I, I don't know. Their opinions that. weren't paying our bills. Nothing. Like, when we were starving, like, niggas weren't giving. Like, I didn't take anything from you. Like, so why the fuck do you care? Like, man, facts. So, people I mean, crazy, that's just, man. Like, people don't count with me, but fucking, I don't care. Like, that shit is, is what it is, bro. Like, niggas like that deserve an award, for real. A Grammy, Oscar together. Have like, you could put it together? Like, fuck it. <laughs> Like, yo, do conversations like Oscar. Facts. Like, <laughs> get that nigga, get that man, whatever. Yo, do do conversations get hard or do it get weird when you might have guests that is on another side that you might not be on? Yes. Like you might be cool with one side. So I've been in that situation a, a few times before. And Who was it? um So when we did, I don't want to say this nigga's name, the guy, he's like an older gentleman, um, and he's very erratic. Um, Charleston White. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's get it. When you did the Charleston White. And then <laughs> so, you know, I did my research, and, you know, I I did my 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 due diligence and all that shit got my questions together but the day of the interview um I was just looking up some like some more little like last minute shit and then I saw the thing where he was talking about um doing some unwarranted sexual acts to the Caucasian women Mm. I'm trying to say it so they don't flag it but like when I saw that, I'm like, what? Like, but then when I saw the when I saw the clip of the shit, he was walking in for us to do the interview. So I had to try to fix my face, but it was like it was on me. Like I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't help it because because right. when I saw the clip, it was like, did did he really just say that? So when we got into the interview, I was trying to hold it, hold it, hold it. But then it came out and it was kind of like, I kind of, I'm kind of mad at myself because I let my emotions get the best of me, but it was like, I still had to get to the bottom of that. Like, what did you really mean by that? And like, why would you say something like that? And what the fuck is wrong with you? Mm -hmm. Like type shit. But it was kind of like, you know, he spoke his piece and we talked um, after the cameras cut off. And he gave like a deeper explanation or whatever, but it was just like that was kind of like that was kind of whatever for me. And like like Black had to like explain to me, you know, what I'm saying that you know like we're not here for feelings. We're mm-hmm. here to basically get a job done, and it's okay to feel how you feel, but don't 
let that Not emotion so overpower your intelligence mm. as opposed to you know us doing our job and us sitting here with an attitude because we don't like something that a nigga said if we don't like something that a nigga said then why are we here Facts. like type shit yo so, so i seen a, um an interview with him when he was saying what he meant by uh when he say fuck nipsey and i thought we the, asked him about that too i thought the explanation was lit i'm not gonna lie i thought he broke mm-hmm. it down so dope but my question is really like where do we draw the line from clout you know what i'm saying like i get you can explain it and it makes good and it's good for a clickbait and get get the viewers and things like that but, but where do said, we draw the um, line he said when we interviewed him he said that he was a character yeah he's about he loved everybody loved his, his real name yeah you know what i'm saying yeah he oh. said that um he was a character and basically like he makes most of his money off of YouTube or some shit. So the more he characterizes himself, the more money he makes. So for all the shit that he says and does and all of the fucking crazy erratic shit that he has going on, it's not doing anything but driving the more attention we pay to him is basically like the more money we're putting into his pockets Mm. and until people stop paying him attention they're not gonna stop paying his pockets why do we draw a line with that shit like i'm (sighs) you know um that shit is like part of me get it like but some shit even with the uh, he be talking about kids, people, with kids and shit. Yeah, I'm, I don't, I don't agree with that. Yeah, I don't know, bro. Fuck I just, this. I don't really, I don't really pay attention to it, so I couldn't really tell you a whole lot about it. But um, it's like it's just like a lot of some shit, a lot of shit is off limits when it comes to when it comes to just like real nigga rules. Mm. You see what I'm saying? And yeah. it's like. I don't know, like, I don't know, like, it's just a lot of shit that, like, me personally, I wouldn't touch on Mm. because of, you know, just the way I was raised, basically. Yeah, no, a lot of shit, I don't know, I think this is weird, man. I appreciate you for pulling up, man. Um, Yo, when you gonna gonna drop your your network? I feel like you can drop a network and, like, get really go crazy. Um... I'm working on it. It's it's in the works, and... um, I have another like another thing that I'm doing with Rico that we're putting together. So again, I can't really, I still can't speak on that yet because we're still getting the paperwork and everything. This shit y'all told me. Yes, but um, we'll 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 be able to like speak on it like really soon. Yo, you Whatever. really be doing what you want. Like you be you be in the room with uh funny Marco. Y'all be doing the uh shit together. Bro, you just do what you want, bro. Like, that's crazy. I'm, <laughs> I'm jealous, bro. Like, how the fuck? Like, put me in a game. But I love you, though. No, no, I'm not really jealous. That's But I you know. really do what you want. What do you do outside of podcast? Like, what would you call yourself? A&R? Like, what do you, like? So I do artist management. Um, I do label consulting. I do events and parties. And I'm just a, a dot connector, I guess. You just lit. Like, I'm trying to be your best friend. Like, how can I, like... We're already best friends. I feel like you go out too much. Didn't you just call me twin earlier? I hate that word. (laughs) Why do you hate the... Why do you hate the twin word, Fucking little kids be like, you're twin, my twinski. Shut the fuck up. You made me pinky swear. What the fuck is this, man? Like, yo, pinky swear. All real niggas have to pinky swear to me whenever they tell me that they're going to do something. No, you told me you was going to do something. Yeah, and I'm here, aren't I? yeah, yeah. You hear, you hear, you hear, you hear, you hear, you hear. Yo, who else you who else you be managing? I feel like you got your hands on everybody. I work with everybody. Like, so how can I be like like your best friend? Like, bro, we're twinskies. I feel like you go out too much for me. I hate outside. No, real real nigga shit. Like, I used to be out seven days a week, but now I only go out when I just absolutely have to go out. Like, they have to drag me out of the house. Like. To go, I out. hate being outside, bro. Niggas be like, yo, Jay, you gotta get outside. Fuck with nigga. Like, I don't fuck with people. But you gotta start fucking with people. Well, you gotta start fucking with people. Niggas are fake. Yeah, they are. 
but you're going to run into them outside of being outside. So you might as well go ahead and bump into them outside and get it over with. You can see a fake nigga at the nail salon. I do need to go to the nail salon. He's still a fake nigga. But if you see this fake nigga outside, then that'll eliminate all the extra chatter when you get to the nail salon. Mm. All you can do is, a, you know, a hi and a bye, what's up, and then leave it alone because you already saw this nigga outside. Yo, you ever, like, you ever interview people like that you didn't want to interview? Yeah. I was wondering if you went to the other Like, yeah, I don't fucking it. I have, but again, like, Black told me, like, we have a job to do, so there's no place for like emotions. Nah, facts. In this shit, like for real, for real. Nah, facts. So. Yeah, I, f- I appreciate you pulling up, man. Um, this shit You're was so hard. very welcome. Nah, man. This my pleasure. I nah. couldn't wait. Nah, yo, you really got a lot going on. Like, I feel like, I feel like niggas know. Aww. I feel like you don't really get a, like, do you do interviews? Like, what the last time you did an interview? This is probably gonna be my second interview that I've ever done in life. I seen the one. Nah, that wasn't an interview. That was just some shit when you were talking crazy. No, you weren't talking crazy. You were talking some real shit. When you was like, um, that shit was going crazy one time. When you was like, girl should get up at 3 o'clock and make her Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But you don't yeah. need no interviews. I feel like you deserve you your like, flowers. You're like, you're the fucking, you're, you're the pioneer of the fucking Baby Jade interview because this is, matter of fact, this might... The other interview I did will only qualify as like a half of an interview. So this can be my first official interview. What do you mean? It was like a kind of like, it wasn't like a, like a, it wasn't like some shit set up. It was like I did some like TMZ shit with somebody one time oh, okay. and it was like, okay, they caught me coming out the club with a whole bunch of niggas and asked me a couple of questions and that was it. But this is like the first real actual interview and uh-huh. you are the fucking messiah. I broke your um your virginity. Yeah, I feel I feel like you you when you came here before you were saying that. I was talking to my niggas like yo, yo you 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 win bro. A lot of niggas really don't fuck with niggas. I think you said the opposite. You was like, we do. No, you feel like they do or you they don't. I feel like they do. Because everybody here not from Atlanta basically. Nah, it's like because. Out of town niggas kind of have like forced themselves on the Atlanta niggas, so it's kind of like it's kind of like a it's kind of like a cooperative cohesion mm. of niggas. All right, so being from Atlanta, because I'm just curious if if I was from Atlanta, I would probably feel this way. But you're lit. Do you ever look at it like, damn, I can see how somebody would be mad because it's like out of town is coming. They get lit when Atlanta got so many people from here that you can kind of back. You feel me? Like you could kind of like back this person. He's from Atlanta. Like these niggas not even from Atlanta. Yeah. Do you you you, you think about that? Like yeah. Damn. So basically, like Atlanta not real for real. Like a bunch of. No, Atlanta's definitely real. Don't fuck. Not me. Atlanta. Atlanta. Don't do like, my city. No, uh, not Mr. your JL. city. Not your city, but like Atlanta as we see it. You mean with the out-of-town niggas mixed in? Yeah, it's just a bunch of, like, cloud chasers. No, no, no. I don't want to say cloud chasers. Atlanta is kind of like a a melting pot of out-of-town fondue. Mm. Is, it doing, is it doing more good for Atlanta? Is it doing less good? What you think? They are blowing me the fuck up. Who was that? That's your man? Uh-uh-uh. <laughs> you, you don't got a boyfriend? I got a... Couple. No, I, you know, a situation. Like entanglement? Mm. Mm-hmm. Why I sound like your lip shake when I ask you this question? <laughs> oh, <Yeah>. my God. <laughs> oh, you ain't want nobody to know that? No, no, no. I am i don't have anybody to answer to. I'm just chilling. I'm just, you know, I'm Jade. I'm just, you know, here. What do I mean? I'm just, you know, I exist. Mm, so if he calls you and you, and you dub his phone call, would he get mad? He who? He is he. You said you got a... He who? You said you got a little entanglement. Who is he? I said I have a situation. Mm. He who? You tell me. Is it No, rapper? you tell me. Who is, is he? Is it a rapper? Fuck no. You would never no. date a rapper? No. I heard no. rappers got money. I got money. 
fuck I care about a rap nigga mm-hmm. having money. All right. So you all date a regular nigga? When you say regular, what do you mean? Nine to five. Every day is hype. No. I mean, no, I'm not saying that. <laughs> there's nothing, no, there's nothing with wrong you, with nine to five niggas. <laughs> no, nah, don't be safe. Don't be they're safe. They're really cool. I know a lot of them. That nine you just, to five. You just, you just want to date them? Not really my type. Oh, so now nine to five got a type? Nah, like nine to five, nine to five people really don't have a lot of time to do shit outside of the nine to five. But entrepreneurs do? Entrepreneurs have a different type of time. Mm. Uh. Nine to five is really just a small window. Entrepreneurs work all damn day. Yeah, but entrepreneurs work all damn day on their own terms. Is it really on their own terms? Mm-hmm. If I had an entrepreneur, you uh, an entrepreneurial nigga, mm-hmm. as opposed to a nine to five nigga, I could call an entrepreneurial nigga and say, "Hey, at three o'clock, let's go, go to, to Cheetah meet- at four, and he could meet me at Cheetah at four, so we could go have lunch, and you know, I could give him a hug, and he could go back to work." A nine to five nigga is still gonna be on the clock at four, and he won't be able to leave until five. And when he leaves at five, he's probably gonna be tired, or he's gonna have to go home, change clothes, do all this shit, whatever, whatever. So I would rather not interfere with the nine to five nigga schedule and just deal with the entrepreneurial nigga who's always ready at whatever time. You said it. Not you. Stand on it. Yeah. Jade, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> okay, B Simone. I'm just oh like, God! Hey, yo, you are fucking. You are nuts. You are a real piece of work, Mister J Hill. Yes. Girl told me she ain't want to date a nigga with a nine to five because he couldn't just get up and go to Jamaica. No, I'm not that superficial. I mean, cheetah, Jamaica. I mean, I don't know. What no, I mean, it was it was like no, 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 potatoes, no. potatoes. No, like no, no, I was no. just, you know, like a, a cheetah, Jamaica, same thing. Tomato, tomato, like you said. I like mean, you know, it was just an example. But like I said, it's nothing wrong. No, 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 no. Don't go back on it. No, no. I know. appreciate you for pulling up. Everybody, everybody, make some noise for J bro. Come on. Oh my god! And now I look like a monster. Oh, thank you, Mr. J Hill. I appreciate you. Yo. Oh my goodness! No, nah, this is all y'all. I appreciate it, man. For real, all love. Yes, all love. I had all a love. really great time. Thank you for I coming. I can't wait man. to do this again. Oh, yeah, I can't wait for you to come again. Oh. And that we got to do that again. What? The shot. You want some more? Come on. No, no, no. We're, I'm cool. You sure? Yeah. Cause I got to make it to where I got to get to tonight. Wait, where you going? Um, they're having a um, they're having a birthday party for Keed, and then. You should come tonight. They're having a birthday party for Keed. And then Scooter has a show at Onyx tonight, a single release party for his new single, Come Eat With Us with ESTG. So I can come with you? Yeah, you can get in the car. You want me to send you a driver? How you, like, what you want to do? So I could just be like, yo, I'm uh, I'm on Jade list. Or well, I just call you when I'm outside? Yeah, I ain't got no list. I'm with Jade. Nigga, let me in. The fuck? And that's going to happen like that? I, you lie so good. I love you. No, I cross my heart and I hope to faint. That's the honest to God truth. I'm going to be, you know how niggas be at the club and be like, yo, Jade, I'm outside. <laughs> <laughs> Red. No, all you have to do is tell the people, like, you're with me. Everybody can say I'm with Jade. What the fuck? <laughs> Come on, you cat then, bro. No, I, oh my God. Baby cat. That's your, that's your <laughs> nickname. <laughs> Baby cat, everybody. Like, what, nigga? Like, I'm going to just come in there and be like, yo, I'm with Jade. They're going to be like, I bet. Come oh on. Oh my God. That's what they're going to say. Are serious right They're going to be like, call her. No, like, I'm going to, hey, my friend from Baltimore, Maryland, or D.C. No, I'm from Baltimore. Whoa. That's crazy. That's worse than <laughs> Cheetah. The <Is> Cheetah <laughs> shit. That's worse than the entrepreneur shit. Damn. I got, it was, like, not all the same area tri-state shit. Like, no. I'm just joking. I know it's not all the same you shit. You cap. Baby <laughs> cap, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, like. Nigga, you can get in my car. Get in my front seat. All right, now I got this. Truck. I got this one other. Um, they pull. They here now. You trying to bring a bitch with you? No, no, no. Can you go downstairs? Um, grab uh. Oh, okay. Cause I was about to say. I mean, you know, if she's with you, then I'll make an exception. But I usually don't do bitches. For real? I don't. No. You just you provide the bitches. No. 
You can be the only one. Yeah. You selfish. No. You selfish. Mm. Baby Jade, everybody. Hey, I appreciate it. <laughs> J Hill, J Hill podcast. <laughs> Yes, we did. It's a wrap, bro. It's a wrap. Nice to meet you guys or see you again. Oh, 